little bit literature and a little bit mathematics and very, very little geography. And that was uh, one, uh, one, uh, thi uh, one of those reasons Minna Kant protested against this kind of education for girls. Okay. And uh, 1863, in Yugoslavia, in the middle of uh, Finland, there was uh, established a college for men and for young girls. Uh, and if you get there, you could uh, study to be a teacher. And Nina Gant was one of those first women who started the studies in Yugoslavia because they began to teach. But to go to Yugoslavia, it was a long, long, long fight because of well, the independent life. But Milna was very, very hard. And I want to go there to Yugoslavia and start my studies. I go to the great uh, stones as well. Okay, and she started the studies, but one of the professor male get love in Minna and uh, started to propose her. Okay, and uh, after two years, Minna said yes. But she was married. But he had stop her studies because it was not suitable for a woman to be married and at the same time study. It was a little bitter thing. Uh, and uh, but anyhow her husband allowed Nina later on to write some stories to newspapers. And in general, it was forbidden for me, in general, in Finland, as those guys. Okay, but to get married, what happens? Children, 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 every other year. And uh, Minna had just four daughters and two sons. And, but then suddenly, 1879, her husband died suddenly. And uh, Nina was pregnant then. And after her husband's death, he had her youngest daughter. Husband's dead, and any children to be alone, and to be filled with very deep depression. And now I understand it because I have read so much and a lot of Nina Gunn's uh, short stories. And there is, there are in many stories, the descriptions of women who are in great depression. Uh, depression. When reading those stories, I thought that nobody describe so deeply and in a sensible way when you are feeling very, very sad and you're very mad. You have to have this experience in yourself. And when I uh, read those things about Minna's life, where I found this after the and uh, he moved again back to Kuovia and took her father's shop because her father had made a banquet and the economical situation was impossible but Milna had so much 
energy and how after this depression and uh, um, step by step the show was su successful again and Mima had then it was okay in the show and she could earn her living and uh, and at the same time, when the money came in, she did it uh, right. And a very, very strong, like a wave in those years, uh, was uh, in Minna's soul. He wrote, she wrote a lot, a lot of short stories, and uh, she was a journalist and wrote stories to newspapers. Uh, she died young, suddenly with a heart attack, 1897. She was only 53. But her, uh, her as an author, it was very remarkable in the Finnish literature. You can say that Nima Gant was the first Finnish <coughs> dramatist, author, journalist who wrote in Finnish. We have had many, many uh, famous writers, but they wrote in Swedish. Alexis Kivi was the first man who wrote in Finnish and Nina Gang was the first first woman in Finland who wrote in Finnish. He's well known of his of her plays. So I have heard plays of Anna Lisa, Sugrubi, uh, the laborer's wife or worker, poor people and uh, the family of a priest. Translations, not so very good. Mm -hmm. And, and um, yeah, when um, he lived uh, in Kuopio, she lived in Kuopio, and uh, the very important thing to tell about is that uh, very many Spanish artists and authors painters so, so, by um, this is the same thing with this one, don't worry. Yeah. You can take it just with Yeah, so, yeah. So, there's no need to use it. So, yeah, and uh, the then we discussed about new ideas, new lives, new ways of thinking, and very, very new ideas. And Kuopio was one of the cultural plays in that time in Finland. And um, in her plays, he always describes a woman <coughs> and her position in society, in marriage, or in life. And this position is not very good, actually. And those problems which women at that, that time had. And um, Mila Khan is always on the side. <coughs> And he was, and she was very brave at her time. It was female teams and uh, plays of women are at the moment. And um, I wanted to do to direct on stage something in the world. And because we are so little, we couldn't, we can't afford to have so many roles, so many actors on stage. And in her place, there are a lot of roles. So they are 
hard to say. So I had the idea that her short stories, nobody had done them before. And uh, then I thought, oh, that's a good idea. Then I got short stories. So I read nearly everything about them. And then I chose three short stories. One of them is called After a Law. And the other one is The Dressmaker. And the last one is The Way of the Home. Yeah. The Way of the Home. And this last, uh, well, I tell about that. And uh, this story 